Hey there guys, Sean Michael here from WinBeta, and welcome to episode 61 of the WinBeta podcast for the week of April 15th, Tax Day in America, uh, 2016. With me as always is co-host Zach Bowden. How, how you doing, Zach? Hello, everybody. And this week we will be talking about all sorts of stories. We, to be honest, are a little skin on some of the news related to Windows 10, but we have Windows 10 mobile news, and we got a lot of other news, including iPhone, Apple, um, Wordflow, we got polls on Windows Phone and all sorts of things, and some stuff coming in the anniversary update and some other general news before we start. Sorry, how are you doing this week, Zach? Not too bad. How are you? Uh, I'm not wonderful. So as a heads up to anyone, if I seem a bit down, my dog died yesterday. So I have two dogs for him died yesterday. So I'm a bit down this week, but you know, <sighs> power through the show best I can. It's always a shame when uh, things you love pass away. Yeah, very hard. sad. <sighs> you know what, though? We haven't... We'll get over it through work, and I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get over it by talking about new things coming very soon. Because this week I learned that the new start menu that Microsoft has shown off recently will be arriving next week in the next Insider build for desktops if everything goes according to plan. So Microsoft announced this new start menu design and start screen design. So the all apps list from the, in tablet mode is being changed up and the actual start menu for desktop mode is being changed up as well. Uh, they announced it a few weeks ago. I think the same week build was, although well, they didn't announce it at build, which was a very peculiar thing. Uh, so the new start menu, if you need to be caught up, it, it adds a hamburger menu and puts the all apps list where the most used, actually is it where most used is? I think it is, it'd be where the most used apps are. So all apps straight away, or all apps are just below it at least. So you no longer have to click into the all apps list. It's just there immediately. And of course the hamburger menu is where all of your quick access links are. So you know right now you can customize it to have a downloads folder or a personal folder on the start menu. That gets moved into the hamburger menu, uh, but you don't have to open the hamburger menu to access these quick links. You can just press the icon and it takes you straight there. So. It's pretty much all the same, except they're bringing the apps list to the forefront of the start menu instead of hiding it under its dedicated area. Very nice. The tablet area, uh, the tablet all apps list is now being kind of, instead of it being in that hamburger menu on, on the left hand side, it's now being put in the center, uh, more similarly to how it was on Windows 8.1 but except it's not spanning across the whole screen, it's just kind of in the middle of the screen, which Sean doesn't seem to like, so... Yeah, yeah, I don't. It's too much wasted space on the sides. Yeah. Um. So yes, those changes should be arriving in next week's build because they they are now being flighted internally in the RS RS one underscore release branch. Which, if you don't know by now, once features hit that branch, they are soon uh, flighted to insiders because insiders get their insider builds from the RS one underscore release branch. That's how that works, pretty much. So if everything goes according to plan and nothing breaks between now and next week we should have a build that drops next week with the new start menu now i know many insiders aren't too pleased with the new start menu design they seem to be more happy about the apps list on the tablet mode side of things but the actual start menu they don't seem to be enjoying or, or they don't seem to like what microsoft is doing which is peculiar because i really do yeah it can, it can get frustrating at times because on one hand an insider program gets you what a consensus of insiders like but on the other hand, what, what if you disagree with the consensus of insiders? No, exactly. Um, I, somebody asked when I posted that story, so if they're putting it in the builds, doesn't that mean they're not listening to our feedback? Not not true. If It, it, it can reach the builds and they can pull it out if they need to. They're, put, they're putting it in the builds so insiders actually have a chance to try it out and make final judgments then because it's pretty difficult to make any judgments just based on a screenshot and a GIF. So they're giving it to insiders to actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. And if after that, the feedback is still poor, they will likely pull it or they just might improve it or do something. I have no idea. But um, yeah, they can, if they need to, replace it back with the old star menu in, in a later well, the build. The thing is, it's a, it's a feedback app for Windows 10. It's not a dictate what Microsoft does app. Right, exactly. It, just because a lot of people say they don't like it doesn't mean that they would necessarily change it. It depends I mean, on the feedback. Said I, I want, you know, this feature to be removed from the camera app. They wouldn't remove it just because people no. said so. It's, it's like more to let them know what people like and don't like, but they're not bound by it. It's exactly. not like a certain number of upvotes requires them to take action. Exactly. So we will definitely see. Also coming next week, I believe next week it will be coming very soon at least. Messaging everywhere. So Microsoft announced the messaging everywhere. Uh, coming soon, uh, last week I believe it was, uh, now uh, 
I've been able to try out and I've released a video earlier, uh, earlier today showcasing that feature in action. It's really cool. It's pretty much how Skype integration works currently with the Universal Messaging app, except with SMS, so it's using your cellular connection instead of Skype. Um, you can set, make it so the desktop app uh, chooses a, an individual phone. So if you have multiple phones uh, hooked up to your account, you can actually choose which phone to send the text from. Very nice. Um, and then obviously send a text on your desktop, it shows up on your phone and vice versa. Pretty cool. I mean, what, what, what can you ask for from a Messaging Everywhere thing? What I'm not happy about, though, is the removal of the Skype integration from the Messaging app. Why are they doing this? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I'm confused on if this is a permanent change or not, though, because I thought we heard that on mobile they were going to keep them both there, and then on the PC they were going to, it was going to change. You said in the in the latest latest build, the one that actually works with the, the messaging everywhere, Skype is removed. Yeah, so in the internal build that I used to try out the messaging everywhere everywhere feature, the actual messaging app doesn't have Skype integration no more. Now I'm not sure if that's just a temporary change or an actual permanent change because on the desktop it's a permanent change, I believe. They're not planning to bring back Skype integration to the universal messaging app. So unless right. it would make sense that they're putting it from the universal phone app as well, except I'm pretty sure Skype said that they were going to keep that feature intact because on phone it makes sense as having it all in one app is a lot more convenient than having it in loads of different separate apps. And Skype, will, Skype uh, Microsoft's original plan here was to have Skype be a viable iMessage competitor. But if they're pulling the, uh, the Skype integration from the meshing app, then it's that that plan is dead because you don't have iMessage on iPhone isn't a separate app from the messaging app is it no it's the same app you send SMS and iMessage from the same app you get blue bubble if it's iMessage green bubble if it's SMS in the Windows 10 November release you send a blue bubble it's Skype you send whatever color your theme oh, is oh they're blue boxes mate don't get them confused sorry blue boxes uh, and then whatever color your theme is is an SMS now it's just a complete 100 SMS Skype is in the dedicated Skype app which interestingly uh is not on the build I tried. So um, I don't know what they're doing. I really, really hope that they bring it back in time for the RTM because I actually enjoyed this and use the Skype integration in the messaging app. I'd much rather experience Skype within one app than have the four separate apps or whatever right. it is. And if you, if you have the app set up like that, so you have Skype integration and SMS integration, and you could choose either one, which I think the interface is actually pretty easy. You just click the arrow and you say which one. And I love that you can do it on a per person basis. So mm -hmm. with Leah, I can use Skype because she has a Windows phone and a Windows tablet and Windows PC, and I know that Skype's gonna show up on any device. But with some of my other friends, they're not going to, so I wanna SMS them. You know, a person by person basis. By having Skype and the future messaging everywhere section, you're making Skype a competitor to iMessage, and you're making a competitor to like the handoff part of you know, Apple's messaging. And you're kind of making it a competitor to something like WhatsApp because um, the messaging app, when you're set to Skype, you can set, send things like photos, and it doesn't cost you anything. It's just sending data as if it was on WhatsApp or Telegram or, or whatever. But through text messaging, some plans charge money for photos because they haven't got the memo that everyone uses apps. Right. It's like they were doing it right, and now they're doing it wrong because the team building that original Universal app was sucked. I mean, we all complained about the Skype integration and the Universal Meshing app when it first launched in the November update. And instead of them just going, OK, we're going to fix it and add more features, they're just saying, all right, fine, we're going to pull the Skype stuff. We're going to build an entire separate Skype app because you compl complained. Yeah. Well, thanks, yeah. Microsoft. I don't know. I, I think it's, it's interesting, though, because on, on one hand, you want the Skype integration that allows it to compete with iMessage and WhatsApp and, and everything else. But on the other hand, they still want people to use Skype and they eventually want people to my eventually i think i think and they may have said this they may have not i think their goal is to have to move away from a win32 app to a universal app right yep so eventually they on pcs it makes sense that they want to have an all in one app i think because they on pcs people are still going to use skype for things like sharing files sharing photos uh, video conferencing all that sort of thing on your phone i think it makes a little more sense that there are individual apps for it but much like an iPhone, and it works like this on, on the now, you can call through call through Skype and make it a video call, or call through Skype, make an audio call, or you can like if you're in the People app, you can message someone, it'll open up in the messaging app. 
But on a PC, I think it's okay that they have that hub, but I do want on the phone to have the option. Here, here's another thing that I really enjoyed as well in the current release, the public release. You know when you get a, a Skype call? It shows up on the desktop as well as your phone, which I really like. Now, yeah. if, if they just added cellular calls to that, then it could just be both, and it would be really nice. Except now with the whole Skype being split up thing, the whole Skype calls would be a separate thing, and it's just, uh Microsoft, why? I think it's hard, it's hard to balance, and I think it's you develop over time what you want. I mean, like I said, we're comparing it a lot to Apple, but honestly, Apple's probably the most direct competitor to this. There's mm-hmm. a FaceTime app. But again, if you're calling someone on your phone and you want to switch it to FaceTime, you just click a button. And so Microsoft needs to get to a point where it's like that. You can find it through apps, but it also natively goes into those features from the People app, from the messaging app. If you hit the phone button, you could pick Skype or or non-Skype call, those types of things. And I think it takes a little while to iron out, but I don't want them to be removing features. I'd like them to be adding options. Exactly. Exactly. Well, this week's mobile build, because there was a new mobile build this, released this week, build 14.3.2.2, still has the Skype integration. It's the last build that I am aware of that does. The build after that, so 14.3.2.3, doesn't. So, so they definitely held off, I think on purpose, uh, with um, releasing a newer build, um, because obviously meshing everywhere isn't ready for insiders just yet. Yeah, so this new build is actually quite packed of new features. There are loads of things. Most of it is the same features we saw in the desktop build the week before. I believe it was the week before. So things like the Action Center stuff. So you now have an updated Action Center. You can prioritize notifications. You can um, even move notifications now. So that was something that I wrote about earlier this week as well. It's been a good week at WinBeta. We had a lot of very cool stories. Um, So yeah, the Action Center... Quick actions can now be customized a lot more than previously. So right now in the current release and in Windows Phone 8.1 and stuff, you can only customize, or maybe not in Windows Phone 8.1. Anyway, the Windows 10 original release, you can only customize the four, the four um, quick access buttons. Or the little four bottom ones. Yeah, the four, the four or five, depending on if you've got a fablet or oh, not. Right. And um, right. yeah, and then you, uh, the ones, the, the rows above that are just uh, organized depending on what you've got on the bottom. Now you can actually drag and drop anywhere you want so you can customize all four rows you can even turn quick action quick actions on or off so if you don't want i don't know the first f- three or four quick actions you could turn them off and then you'd only have three rows instead of four well yeah like i never used notes i've never found a point where i want to open up one note from the quick action menu somebody else might want to so being able to turn it off you could remove a row and then it's easier to find what you do want exactly so you can now clean up your entire quick access area very nice indeed uh the Actual Action Center UI has been slightly updated. Some apps now support hero images, such as Cortana. You can add a nice hero image to your reminders. So when she reminds you, you get a big image just to remind you and whatever else. And that shows up in the Action Center as well. Lots and lots of changes in the Action Center. What else was new in that build? Off the top of my head. Well, I, I really like these images. They had, they had quite a bit of personality to these reminders. Yeah, I think so too. And they're high quality images too. Like I, I don't know why it wouldn't be in 2016, but I, I'm just glad that they look nice. It, they fit the UI well and everything. I just okay, on the actions you, to to drag and drop, you have to go into the settings app, though, right? Uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. It would be nice if you could drag and drop them. Hold on a sec. Okay, it would be nice if you can drag and drop them, just like you do with apps. Yeah, but I mean, Sean, you can't have everything. <laughs> not yet. Well, maybe in the future they'll bring that in. Can't have everything. Uh, other changes in this build are the settings app now has icons next to the options. Uh, just, you know, a nice UI addition there. Um, and some new elements, some new features have their own options in the uh, settings apps as well, such as the navigation bar and the glance screen. They've moved out of the extras area and into their own sort of personalized bar stuff. Very nice indeed. Uh, and emojis the new emojis yeah. Microsoft announced last week are here in this build as well also a very nice change that I actually haven't spoken about in this build uh, that Gabe did was the USB Ethernet support with Continuum so now if you have a USB Ethernet adapter you can plug that into your Continuum dock whilst using Continuum and actually use an Ethernet connection on your 930 or 950 and 950X. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, very nice. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to take advantage of that because why wouldn't they? So you would need a USB Type-C to Ethernet adapter? 
No, you can just use a standard one because remember the the spade dock has standard USB three ports on it. Oh, okay. I think it's USB three. But yeah, very nice indeed. Oh yeah, of, of course. One of the biggest changes, of oh, the biggest two changes, uh, camera button on the lock screen. If you have an on-screen keyboard, uh, on-screen nav keys, and media controls on the lock screen. This is a big one that insiders have been asking for since well Windows Phone eight, I believe, or something like that. You can now. Um, yeah, so no longer will you have to press the volume rocker to just change the song on the lock screen. It sits on the lock screen all the time, just like an iPhone and I believe Android on most Android devices. Yeah, so very... very, very nice. And of course, they got over the messaging everywhere saying it's coming soon. A new, and he's correct. A newer mobile build is required for this experience to fully light up because the uh, build 14.3.2 doesn't have the new messaging everywhere app. So once that's released to insiders, then... You've, you're you're able to begin using your messages everywhere, but until then, no can do. Yeah, I I, I want to talk about it for a second. I think Windows 10 Mobile, as much as it's not popular in terms of market share, I think it's really rounding out to be a good-looking, feature-rich operating system. Uh, yeah, I think so too. I think it's with every release, it's getting better and better. And, and I think with these anniversary updates, it's you, you're seeing just. It's what they talked about with this Windows as a service thing. It's just, I know it's not popular, but what, what I think we're going to get is by the time they come out with some sort of major flagship device, whether that's either a Microsoft-made Surface phone or honestly, I mean, what if the HP Elite X3 really picks up in the business sector? That might be, you know, a flagship device, even though, you know, people want it to be made by Microsoft. But... By the time we get a popular device, I think Windows 10 Mobile is going to be pretty polished, which for a long time, like Windows Phone 8.1 and especially Windows Phone 8, were not polished. They weren't good-looking operating systems. Basic things like settings organization was very funky. Well, now you're, you're getting this operating system that looks more and more like an extension of your computer. And with the anniversary update, it also functions like an extension of your computer the UI language is the same. So you got hundreds of millions of people on Windows 10. If they ever did pick up a Windows 10 mobile device that ran well, is running the anniversary update, has these features that are drawing them in, they say, oh, I know how to find the settings because I know how to do that on my PC. I know how to use the Action Center. I know how to use Cortana. And it's almost like it's more than a beta test because it is a public release technically right now. Like there are actual non-insiders running Windows 10 mobile. But with the market share so low, with, to the point that if Microsoft loses a percent, it's just it's going from three to two. It almost lets them test these out and make the operating system even better while they crank it up in preparation for a major device. I mean, th this is half the reason why Redstone 2 was delayed as well, right? Because not, they're waiting for the hardware for starters, such as the Surface Phone. But they are, uh, there is a big software push, first-party software push with Redstone 2. So... The reason that they're both delayed and they come together in conjunction, it's all part of one big universal plan that should see Windows 10 Mobile, because Windows 10 Mobile should have a huge focus with Redstone 2, uh, as well as desktop. Uh, so I hope with Redstone 2, I, I imagine we should have a pretty polished, ready-to-go platform for mobile, and I'm pretty excited about that, especially with the Surface phone being a Surface phone. It's going to be really nice and really like premium feeling, and I think that will be when Windows 10, when Microsoft turns the boat around with Windows 10 Mobile. Right. Yeah, I think it'd be pretty nice, honestly. I like Windows 10 Mobile. It just looks nice. Like just a little thing. Like today, this is. People say this, but it's really true. If Windows Phone had apps, which to me generally it's fine, but there actually are apps that I miss, you know. But in any event. Um, App gap aside, it's really nice looking operating system. Even things like like live tiles on your on your start menu is just really nice. Mm. And I, when you show that to your friends, I'm like, hey, look at this. They're like, oh, that's really cool. And then you show them it can either be made up of the tiles or behind it. And they go, that looks really sleek. So it's a good looking operating system. It's just they have to get enough popularity to behind it to get some of these other things to jump on board. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because the original Windows Phone adverts were the smartphone beta test is over and now all windows phone is is a big huge beta test so <laughs> so uh, it's kind of done a full circle there so maybe next year we can be saying the smartphone beta test is over again 
I think we're getting close with this. I mean, I think it's certainly stable now. I, I know some people still have some issues, but my 930 runs it really well. Yeah, I think the, the hardware is going to run Red, it. Really Redstone well. 1, the anniversary update, is definitely going to feel like bringing my PC and phone together a lot more than currently, which I'm very excited about. That's going to be an interesting test to see if that translates to anything because, like I said, they're going to have these people who are familiar with Windows 10. Are they even going to look at some of these new phones that are coming out? And honestly, there are demographics that aren't affected by the app gap, and there are demographics that are. So like an 18-year-old that loves certain social media and they use certain apps, they're never going to use one. And that's like just going to happen. But enterprise, you know, whatever. We'll see. We'll see if it translates. Yeah. Anyway, we got some news that kind of rolled out as we were doing podcast prep. So I haven't done full research on it yet, but it is pretty big news. There was an interview today that's on Microsoft.com. And it is with, um, oh, what's his name? It's with Dave Cutler, who is a Microsoft Senior techno Technical Fellow. And there's a quote in it, and I, 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 you know, give them credit. This Windows Central cover this, I'm sure we'll have a post on this. It literally, you know, this is just getting pub now. But there's a quote, and it's talking about the future of Windows Phone. And this is a quote from Cutler, and it says, at the, at the time, some question why Microsoft developed the 64-bit operating system Today, most computers are 64-bit systems, and and then and you know they put this in bold, rightly so. Even our phones will soon have a 64-bit operating system, which would be a pretty big deal if you could have a phone that runs 64-bit. Right, and this has been in the works for a while now. So um, I think the the news here is that Microsoft has now finally said that this is a thing, rather than just us seeing it and and Microsoft not saying anything. So. Uh, sure, OEMs will now be able to make phones that have 64-bit, you know, think of a Bob. Uh, very exciting. But is it worth it? Like, yeah, well, is... apparently some of the chips that we're running already, like some of these latest Snapdragons, already run. Oh, yeah, that's correct. 64, but, but not when they're on a phone. That's 32-bit operating system. Yeah, but I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if this would be, I don't think it would be. But imagine if you could. They released just 64-bit for as an upgrade to the what we have now. I don't think well, I don't think you could do that because you can't on desktop. But it'd, it'd be interesting. Well, yeah. What what would you say about desktop? Uh, you can't upgrade from a 32-bit. Yeah, so I don't know. To 64 -bit. Yeah. But so I, I didn't know much about this to be honest. I just know it's you know function some of the end results. But uh, you can run higher than four gigabytes of RAM if you. Um, if you have a 64-bit. So especially some of these Continuum phones, if you got to a point where you're running Win32 apps, if you have a 64-bit operating system, Windows 10 Mobile with 6 or 8 gigabytes of RAM running Continuum, you could really have a pocket PC phone, and it would have the power and oomph behind it. Right. So that'd be pretty sweet. That was, if, if you know, well, like you said, this, we've talked about it before, but if, or when it comes out. Now they're talking about it publicly, but... Yeah, it's just whenever, I guess, Mike. So it's always soon. So it was yep. soon the last time we talked about it, and I'm pretty sure the next time um, we talk about it, it will also be soon, so... 64-bit, <laughs> oh, baby! I can, just, I can just sense it now, though, Zach. What? There'll be these people, and they go, they didn't upgrade, they didn't let the Lumia 920 upgrade to Windows 10 Mobile, and then everybody bought the Lumia 950, 950XL, and now they've come out with a 64-bit version, <laughs> and you can't upgrade those, and people will be all upset because all that stuff. I'm waiting for 128-bit. <laughs> That's why I'm waiting. Well, I remember, I remember years ago there was a rumor uh, that Windows 8 would support 128-bit which I thought was hilarious because there was no need back in 20... There's still no need, really. There won't be a need for years for, for a 32, 64, and 128-bit version of Windows, but... Right. I mean, I don't... Most computers wouldn't be able to run that, I don't believe. Only the super... The super amazing ones that only governments have and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Those Windows 8, guys. 128-bit support coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmed. Anyway, we got another story that, that I, I thought we should add in here. Um, did you see the that Windows Spotlight might be on its way to Windows 10 Mobile? That would be cool. Ah, would it be cool? I don't think it would be cool. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the thing. So in Icon, let's see here. So we have a story here. It's in Build 14322. There is a toggle switch for, let's see here. Apparently there's a source, the next scene highlights that a Windows Spotlight icon. 
can can be found in the background app settings of RS1 build 14.322, and one of them is for Windows Spotlight on off. So Windows Spotlight, it allows Microsoft to a pleasant way to say be promote apps. A more cynic, cynical person would say this is the way Microsoft has more advertising. Yeah. Uh, so, but to be I fair, though, I, it's just I know that was a bit controversial. We have some users that really didn't like Spotlight on their Windows 10 PC. So, how do you think people would respond to it to uh, being on a phone? I think it's funny because obviously Spotlight is an advertising platform more than anything from developers and Microsoft. Uh, except on phone, who are you advertising to? Because nobody. I was sitting on the bus today, and there and there was a woman sitting next to me with a Lumia 640, completely eligible for the Windows 10 upgrade, and it's still running Windows 10 8.1. Do you know why? Because Microsoft is still not pushing Windows Phone 8, uh, Windows 10 Mobile to well, these devices. Well, because she doesn't know how to probably do the jumping exactly. around to get through there. Yeah, Microsoft made it stupidly difficult to get onto Windows 10. So nobody's getting there. Only The only people who are running Windows 10 are insiders who just use the insider app anyway, or insider family members who have insiders who just upgraded their phone for them. That's the only people who have done this. And if everybody else, all the 1% of, of the market, the phone... Those was, 1 percenters, those yeah, lowly... The smartphone population, half of that 1% aren't doing anything because they just aren't. Yeah. Just... Hey, Leah, you have a Lumia 640. Does it run Windows 10 Mobile well? Uh, yeah, yeah. Does that work okay? <laughs> Yeah, it works fine. Well, it's fine. There you go, you people. Why is this? That's true. I that's, did. Yeah, that is I the was... whole. That's what I did just say. If if somebody who isn't an insider is running Windows 10, it's because somebody they know is an insider. <laughs> Put it that way. That's true. <laughs> so, if Windows Spotlight practically useless on Windows 10 Mobile right now, anyway. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. I I don't think I'd care because if it gives you the option to turn it off, then I don't mind. Again, if it's a feature I don't like and it has an on-off switch, I don't care. Mm. You could put almost any feature on there. You'd be like. Now Windows Phone has the ability to be an iPhone, and I'd be like, okay, on or off. That's a, you know what I mean. As long as there's an option, I don't care. Yeah. And you shouldn't either, listeners, because if it doesn't affect you, it shouldn't affect you. Exactly. Uh, now I'm messed. I, the the order on this one though is messed up for me. I have no idea what's next. Oh, it's Apple. Me. Okay. Uh, we're in the other section now. So, um, so quick time. The media player, there are some vulnerabilities on the Windows version, and they're not going to get fixed. And so, basically, Apple is is um, they're not going to fix them, so people stop using. Which them. is really bad. Uh, I would say this is terrible because at the Adobe Creative Suite, I'm pretty sure some of the functions it requ- uh, uses will ask you for QuickTime on Windows. Yeah, it's just weird because it just goes. This is the headline and subheadline. Apple kills off QuickTime for Windows. Vulnerabilities won't be fixed. PC users instructed to uninstall QuickTime ASAP. Yeah, I, ju- I you know, I literally just installed QuickTime yesterday so I could get something but done. How is that how is that the solution? Like oh, you know, 90% of the world uses Windows. Are we going to there's like a thing it doesn't work on Windows. Meh. <laughs> not going to fix it. I mean, this, like, this, uh, this must put how Adobe. Is that solution? This must put Adobe in, in trouble as well. That means they're going to have to develop their own solution for stuff for Windows surely, right? Uh, Unless, unless yeah. Adobe should be like, well, just install this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> now, I don't quick, know. Quick, it... Tim knows, right, QuickTime is awful in every way possible. And it's like, I mean, you know, it's probably a good thing that QuickTime's dead now on Windows. Well, yeah, I mean, there are other things um, that, you know, wasn't there, wasn't there a media, there was a thing on the web, it was like Adobe Flash. Is that people moved away from? Just websites just over time just gradually switched away from yeah, it? Yeah, I think Adobe Flash is what you're talking about. Yeah. And so, I mean, some of these things, they just kind of evolved. But, it, you know, like you said, if there are going to be hiccups with other programs trying to rely on it, there you go. Uh, one of the commenters here, Noah T, says, QuickTime is not necessary for act- After Effects. No. So, but there are some t- things that will ask for ask, that will, will ask for QuickTime within the Adobe Creative Suite. I know there are because I've seen the problem. Is Adobe Premiere Pro one of those? I think it is. Uh, I, oh, I no, one. I actually use that. No, but I think you can use the app anyway we'll get, without it, but it will ask for reasons unknown. I've never found a reason why it does ask, but if, I think if you're rendering in a certain format, because I usually render videos in MP4 because YouTube just accepts that quite easily, uh, and that's when I think it asks for it. But if you render in uh, AVI or something, you know, more universal, Universal. You, d- you don't need it. So, so it's, is QuickTime one of those things that shows up on my PC all the time, telling me I need to update it? 
if it's depends on with what at the Apple update thing. Yeah. Then probably. <laughs> oh, I'm so as soon as I switched away from iTunes and got rid of that, it was it was oh, I was so happy. <laughs> yeah, iTunes is just those, those Apple updates and they show up and all that stuff. I'm okay with Win. I don't know why, but for some reason, I just hate the Apple updater thing. iTunes and QuickTime both are terrible pieces of software and Mac OS. Let's be fair. Whilst we're here, <laughs> they're, they're, uh, Apple's not a software company. They're don't not pull any punches, Zach. Tell us what you really think. <laughs> Um, yeah, so is that, that's that story in a nutshell. Well, go find Thomas Negro, or Negro, our buddy from VLC. Everybody switch over to that or something. <laughs> yeah, or just Groove. Go to Groove. Yeah, I, yeah, it depends what you're using it for. So. Groove's, Groove is ten times better than iTunes. I love Groove music. Me too. We use it all the time. We have a, um, Lay's got a Groove music pass. We're using it for our wedding. Um, I've got a Groove like, music pass. Yeah, I, I, I like the user interface. I like the feature set. It works well with OneDrive. Mm -hmm. Download music, play it anywhere from Groove Music Pass. So I like it quite a bit. It's pretty nice. Anyway, um, probably moving on now. Sp speaking of iTunes and Apple products, Zach, Microsoft's <laughs> a big fan of them, apparently. <laughs> so we already knew about this. This was this isn't news that it's coming. We're just going to talk about it a bit more. Um, did we talk about this last week? The WordFlow keyboard on iOS. Uh, I don't believe it did. If I don't think we talked about it. If we did, somebody let me know, and we will quickly end it. Anyway, um, so we've known since January that the WordFlow keyboard was going to come to iOS, but now Mac Rumors, and, and there are more videos and hands-on things coming out, but Mac Rumors talking about it here, and you have a video of how it works, and there are some pretty cool features coming on this WordFlow keyboard that I would love to see come to the Windows 10 mobile version, not to mention the Windows version. When are they going to bring this full key? Actually, WordFlow might be on Windows 10 already, but shape writing isn't. In any event, so some of the features include customizable. Well, first of all, the fact that it's coming to iOS in general is relatively new, though obviously we've known about it for a while. People have seen it. There's also that little curved thing for one-handed mode. So if you have your phone, the keyboard will curve around just like the lower, either right. I think you can do it on the left as well side of the screen so you get the little curved keyboard as well and then you also have um customizable themes and backgrounds including light and dark and then other photos and that sort of thing it looks really nice and then the fact that it's word flow it's not just a keyboard by microsoft with themes it's word flow just to clarify i think we've probably used these terms interchangeably because i think microsoft has at times mixed these up but maybe i'm wrong word flow refers to predictive text within the keyboard so if you're typing and you write, you know, like TH and then it knows that you're saying the or something much more complicated than that, that's under word flow. Shape writing is what it is when you when you swipe around. It's like Android swipe. So those are technically different, even though most of us are used to on Windows 10 mobile them being paired together. But for iOS and beta right now, it is the word flow predictive text. Yeah, I, I've never called it shape writing. Every time I reference yeah. it to anybody, I just say word flow. <laughs> yeah. So now we have to learn to to remember to keep those separate. You know what? I'm just I'm just not going to learn. I'm just going to continue calling it word flow because why <laughs> well, do I have to change? We've always been separate, but well, it's te it's technically word flow because when you're swiping, it still has to kind of guess what you're saying. Well, I'll give you an example. The Microsoft Band Two allows you to type, right? Yeah. And it uses predictive typing. Yes. Relatively, I guess, yeah. But you can't use swipe typing on the Microsoft Band. No. no. So when they announced the Microsoft Band, they said that it supported WordFlow keyboard, I think. But it didn't support shape writing, and that caused some confusion. Look, it's WordFlow. <laughs> I know, it's dumb, because WordFlow <laughs> sounds really nice, because it's literally, you're flowing words. I mean, it's like, the it's, you couldn't describe it better. It even sounds kind of catchy. WordFlow. Oh, that's nice. Shape writing, technically accurate, but I guess that is that's a bit it's more. It's not Microsoft. really shape writing because I'm not writing squares or circles. I'm usually just doing like a figure of eight most of the time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, it's just really big swiping figure. It's eight. like yeah. a circle, like maybe just a, a little hill and then a little flick at the end. It's, it's not like woohoo, loads Has of Microsoft shapes. Microsoft ever been good at naming things though? Not really, no. <laughs> Even now, they Windows 10. What is this? I still think Windows 10 is a terrible name. Should be Windows One, That's Windows, or just Windows, just the new version of Windows, the new Windows. Uh, take a little Apple 
on board. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so there's that. So word flow and shape, right? Yeah, I just call it keyboard. So what do you call it when you just type normally as if it was 2009? If you just type, but you don't let it predict your words where you're letting, where you're clicking to like do the whole word, then you're just typing on a keyboard. Sorry, is word flow just technically another word for autocorrect? No, it's not autocorrect. I, don't, I believe word flow is if you're like in a messaging app, I mean, they're never getting Oh, yeah, so, so at the top, you get that bar, and it's like, oh, this is what you might be exactly. thinking. Exactly. I believe that's the word flow, predictive text writing. And then autocorrect is just when you spell something wrong, and the phone's like, well, exactly. you're, you're an idiot. That's how you spell it. So they it. might be run by the same engine under the hood. Probably. Still, and it's it's all... still trying to predict what word you're trying to say. And it's all under shape writing. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want my phone to learn me a bit better, and I hope that that happens over time, because they did buy... What was that keyboard company that Microsoft bought? Uh, Swift Key, I think it was. No. Yeah. Was it Swift? So, and that remember. learned how you wrote, and then it got better. Yeah, I, so... the Windows one, the Windows Phone one does do that as well. I'm sure it does, because mm -hmm. it, it will eventually learn words that you type. Because I, I've, there's some words that I type that Windows Phone won't know straight away, and then it does learn it. Yeah, so, I, I, I just doesn't seem to do it fast enough for my liking. If that is a thing, it does. I don't think it does it fast enough for what I want. <laughs> yeah, straight away. I want this word to be in my dictionary. I think you can. Oh, add it is so time. annoying with autocorrect when you type and you're like, dump, 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 and then it'll change it, and you're like, no, <laughs> dump, 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 and then it'll change it, and you have to do it like three times to get it to actually work. I find on Windows that's the worst because Windows has autocorrect built in, I believe now. So when I'll be typing into Twitter or something, I'll try and. I'll try and be typing a word in a specific way, and then every time I press space, it would correct that word, and then I have to back up, do it again, press space, and then it would all correct that word again, and then I have to just, like, select it. I just do, do this weird thing just to make it so it doesn't correct itself. Yeah. Well, that was a very lively keyboard discussion. Yeah, more like a rant, I think. I guess. I have a quick story. It's not really a story. I just think it's funny. You can buy Minecraft Legos now. I cannot believe this is a story we wrote this week. <laughs> this is not technology. This is a toy and it's Minecraft. And just because Microsoft owns Minecraft, <laughs> I don't care for it. But Zach, do you understand what this means? No. What does it mean? We had Legos when we were kids and we played with blocks. And then they made Minecraft, which is like an unlimited Lego free open world. And now you can make Legos of Minecrafts, which <laughs> were probably largely influenced by Legos. And soon you'll be able to mix that with HoloLens. Yeah, exactly. So maybe soon you'll be able to play with Legos on HoloLens and the Legos will go into Minecraft. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, that's a thing. <sighs> I have real news, though, I suppose. We did a poll this week. Do you want to hear about it? Absolutely. Oh, I'm not sure you do based on the topic. Oh, okay. <laughs> So the question in this week's poll, and, and for those who don't know, these are purposely written to make people vote and debate. Like, I, I think of these polls to make you somewhat get upset and go argue with people in the comments. Mm. That's like a huge purpose of these polls. It's also to do a topic and for Zach and I to share our thoughts and to see what you think. But it's purposely meant to tick you off just a bit. So the question is, can Microsoft save Windows Phone? <laughs> yeah see told you and the three options i gave were yes no and then just to be nice windows phone doesn't need six. you know what you gave in you should not have had that third option just <laughs> yes or no and then everybody who gets mad saying windows phone doesn't need saving can go to the comments because guess what it does <laughs> yeah is that... well i wouldn't actually i don't know if it does so, yeah, it depends what your definition of save is. Let me get you the results here. So we had uh, over 2,000 votes, 61% approximately, these are all being rounded, 61% said yes, 24% said no, and just under 15% said Windows Phone doesn't need saving. So <laughs> almost 15% of people said it doesn't need saving at all. Oh, that were such optimists. I find that a bit closed-minded. I mean, I like Windows 10 Mobile. I use it all. Oh, and I put in the article, I just referred to it generally as Windows Phone as the understanding that Windows 10 Mobile is actually the title for the operating system now. I think it's a bit optimistic, like you said. 15%. I mean, it doesn't need saving. The market share is terrible and going in the wrong direction. So they do need to do something. But you and I think they've already done steps to save it, right? Yeah, and they will come into play next year. 
<laughs> so 2016 is not the year for Windows Phone. Let me see here. When I was talking about the poll in the live comments, we already have, I said, and then we have, no, no, yes, I missed the poll again. No, 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 <laughs> all cap, yes, no. So you see these people, they debate. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think they've already done the steps that they're trying to do to save it with the universal app platform and all the things that we talk about on a pretty regular basis. I have a question for you. How did you manage to get the poll in the post? <laughs> uh, there's a specific WordPress embed. I used that, and for no matter what I could do, the stupid part uh, I did, did last you use week. The WordPress.org embed. I don't know. Yeah, because because there's a WordPress.com embed and a WordPress.org embed. It's so stupid. Like I could. And, uh, and you don't do it in the text editor. You do it in the visual editor. <laughs> did you see the poll I wrote last week? I that did. Just, it showed up at the top. Of the <laughs> just in the corner, and we we spoke about we were looking at how to fix it, and then we kind of just all went. Just, just leave it. <laughs> and that poll had more votes than any poll I've ever done. Uh, well, it was a... or, or up there. It's up there. It's it up was behind. a popular topic. That's why. I'll show you later. It's 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 uh, WordPress.org visual editor. There's a specific way to share it. Anyway, um, I don't think Microsoft has to do much more to save it that they can that they're in control of. They've done everything they can to close the app gap, um, apart from coming out with a flagship device. But that's coming on the on the way. And the Windows 10 uh, app model and, and platform is built to try to save Windows 10 Mobile. So I don't know what more they could do. And I think they can save it. I don't think it will ever be like iOS or Android, but I think it will be more stable. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so somebody in the – I don't know why I'm answering your question during the podcast, but you cannot get the Messaging Everywhere app yet. It's coming in the next Inside the Build, coming probably next week, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> uh, moving on. <laughs> Unless you, unless you wasn't done with the poll. No, no, I'm done. Yeah, that's it for the poll there. Thanks for voting. Vote next week. All that stuff. Trying to, it's every Wednesday now. We've, we've put this in stone. Even if I'm working somewhere else on Wednesday, I'm going to make a poll, save it for later, and we will post it Wednesday morning, every Wednesday, until I die. <laughs> uh, is this my story? Because I can't yeah, see sure. names. Anniversary update is coming to the Xbox One preview end of May, early June. So... I believe, uh, Dev, those of you trying to develop uh, apps on the Xbox One can actually technically get there now. You can download build 14, um, 14 to 90, which is technically Redstone, but I don't think there's any new features in it yet, um, for Xbox at least. So yeah, end of May, early June will be the actual public preview for Redstone on Xbox One. That should, and I, I, I'd be surprised if it doesn't, it should in in introduce the new Universal Store and possibly Cortana. Like, Cortana was announced for Xbox One last, almost a year ago now. So it's, it should be here now. <laughs> it's taking some time to bring. And I recently bought a Kinect for my Xbox One. I bought a used Kinect for £35 and it works fine. Is it a Kinect V2 or Kinect V1? Uh, V2 for the Xbox One. Yeah, that's better, yeah, I yeah. can now shout Xbox on. Damn it, didn't work. <laughs> it's because I was talking. If I, if, if I stay silent, Xbox on. Did you hear it? It came on. Yeah, I heard it like yeah. a little. Yeah, yeah, there you go. See? Wicked. So, yeah, that's the thing now. Do you think they're going to come out with an Xbox Slim, Zach? This year, I really, yes. 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 I'm saying yes, they will. I'm hoping they do, because then I get your old Xbox One. <laughs> yes, you do. It's the only reason I want an Xbox Slim to come out. Just to just to help numero uno. <laughs> so well, uh, sometimes we have to be selfish. Well, you know, I wouldn't mind an Xbox Slim coming out. I also wouldn't mind an Xbox One coming out that doesn't have some of the features and lowered the price point. I would definitely buy an Xbox One if I had the money with um without a Blu-ray player in it. I yeah. would buy an Xbox One without a disc drive in it. I would buy an Xbox One without a disc drive either because I. Don't have any disc-based Xbox One games. I, have, you know, I bought, <laughs> I bought The Sims 3 for Xbox 360 the other day. Uh, not for me. I don't play Xbox 360 games on a 360 no more. And the only Xbox 360 I have in this house is a dev kit, so I can't play disc-based games anyway. But um, yeah, that's the first disc-based game I've purchased in forever. Yeah, I mean, I would, I, if you know, if I was in the market for a console and didn't have one already, and they came out with an Xbox One Slim. That didn't have you know a disc drive at all, but because of that, the price was much lower. I would definitely look into it. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when it starts supporting apps, because it'd be like your TV box. And I'd love it if they could shove in things like a DVR. You know, make it like a you know like things that they have in there, but finalize it. 
Mm. So, but we'll see. Anyway, well, I mean, if they it, do that, great, and we will freak out then, and we will have a party. The Xbox One is a pretty big console compared to the it PlayStation is, yeah. 4. They do need to definitely shrink it down. Even to just Xbox 360 uh, E size, or even smaller. Smaller would be awesome, but I don't think they'd be able to get it that small. I mean, I don't think Microsoft has, Microsoft has ever released a console on the size level of the, play, the PS2 Slim. Right. Because that, that thing's like that, and it's about that long. It's, that is a tiny console, whereas... Um, Microsoft didn't ever do that with the Xbox original or the 360. Oh, then to be fair, Play- Sony didn't do it with the PlayStation Wait, wasn't 3. Wasn't there an Xbox 360 Slim? Yeah, but it's not as small as the PS2 Slim. Oh, okay. Okay. That was a it's tiny slim. thing. It's not that slim. It's about it's less than an inch in thickness, that was. That was crazy. Even the, 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 the PlayStation 3 Slim is... Uh, still thicker than a pencil, though. It's still thicker than this, correct. <laughs> Maybe if they came out with an Xbox One Slim... They could have one of those novelty gigantic pencils. <laughs> and put it behind that. It'd be <laughs> like be funny. Thinner than a pencil. And then and then um Phil Spencer comes out and he's holding the pencil and it's like this big. <laughs> Thinner than this thing. So was the original Xbox One, but who cares? <laughs> the joke know. still stands. Oh, where's my one note gone? I've lost it. Well, last piece of news for the week. Yeah. Um I don't know a ton about this, but I'll I'll summarize it here. So Microsoft and Facebook have announced the Universal Windows platform support for open source React Native. Um, I'm just going to read this because I fall into this category. If you're not familiar with it, React Native is a framework for building native apps using React, which is a JavaScript library for creating user interfaces. The framework focuses on efficiency to allow developers to learn once and write everywhere. It's one of the fastest growing open source projects on GitHub and Facebook currently uses the framework in multiple production apps. And then they talked about how that can also uh, work in conjunction with Windows 10. So for people that are into this sort of thing in developers, this was huge news. Like I know our friend Thomas Negro was buzzing about this. Yeah. So for some people, this is a really big deal. Yeah, I have nothing to input on this story. <laughs> Perfect. I just summarized the article. You can go read it. And then I'll... go tweet Thomas, because he'll talk to you about it, I'm sure. I want to go no back problems. to the, the Xbox, Xbox One conversation. Um, somebody says here, yeah, you'd have X- Microsoft would have to tread carefully with the discless Xbox One, because when they tried to go, oh, this is an entertainment device, uh, the gamers hated it, which is why this was one's failing today, because of their original announcement. If Microsoft were to go disc based, uh, discless-based, on an Xbox One console. They still have to sell the current Xbox One just to please gamers. And they'd also have to market the, the Xbox One Slim slightly differently. They would have to be like, this is the Xbox One for digital-based purposes. This isn't for discs. They'd have to be very clear on this because gamers would ha- be very sort of sensitive. Even gamers today are still sensitive about the digital side of gaming. Like, they still want games a lot a lot of gamers still want games on disc and it's i think that's crazy like this is the 21st century it's 2016 it's time to move to digital and to be fair though the xbox one they need to stop selling the 500 gig xbox one yeah yeah yeah. i can't have seven games installed and without running out of space so they need to definitely fix the internal storage and make i know a, a two three five terabyte xbox one that's slim no disc drive uh, quiet and p- possibly connect at least voice integration uh, for connect so n- n- you don't really need the camera but yeah. it's, if, well, if it had the voice and the and the infrared sensors that would be good enough you are right though with the with the disc base you remember when the PlayStation uh, 4 was out and they had that ad campaign on how do you share your games with your friends yeah you remember that? And it was that just was like, hilarious. And he's like, this is how you share games with your friends on PlayStation 4. And the guy takes like a disc and like hands it to his mate. Yeah. And it was like a clear dig at Microsoft. Absolutely. That was such a cheeky advert. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it was very clever. I mean, look, I, I you know, you got to you got to compliment good marketing when it's good marketing. Yeah. But yeah, I guess you're right. They have to be they have, the comment. Right I there. bet I, I bet because of stupid gamers, the Xbox One Slim out still has a disc drive. I will be very sad if this is the case. Just do both. Have an Xbox One Slim and an Xbox One Ultra Slim. Yes, yes, good idea. Slim for Except the disc. Slim with the disc, and, th- and they could announce the the discless one first, and then be like, wait. And then they could do the Panos Panay and be like, look again. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, 
they go and there's a second Xbox One Slim next to it and there's a disc going into it. Or yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Because last year, I, I, keep, I think I've mentioned this before, last year's E3 was a big one for Microsoft. That's when they announced backwards compatibility. And they had that really huge response, that uproar of cheering, and it was a really great moment for Xbox. I think one of the biggest moments in Xbox history, that announcement there. They need something to top that this year, but I don't know what they're going to do to do it. And, and there's rumors that Sony might be announcing the PlayStation 4.5. Yeah. And Nintendo might be announcing whatever the official name for the Nintendo NX if this is. is. If this is true, then my, my Xbox One is going to fall behind pretty fast if they don't also announce an Xbox One and a half. Yeah. Which, which I, I don't know if you'd want to add more power. That That's the problem is you don't want to fragment the gaming market. Right, but I, didn't, I remember that, that article I wrote about how they could release a more powerful Xbox One but keep the ecosystem kind of as relatively fair by making developers target the main, uh, the, the, the original Xbox One, and then have those games automatically upscale when on the newer console. Just make an Xbox One that can play PC games in full 10 You know what, let's just cut this generation early and just start the next generation now. Let's just release... Just make it an Xbox PC. It can run Windows 10 gaming PC, minimum requirements... And it's amazing. Yeah, just a modular Xbox One where I can just... Perfect. Just do that. Done. Yeah. We fixed Microsoft. Phil Spencer, just send our check in the mail. Exactly. Or, or PayPal us, whatever. Yeah. Also, 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 here's, here's a, another good one. Shape writing, get rid of that. Just call it Wordflow. Yeah, exactly. And shape. then every time you use a Wordflow keyboard, also have it have shape writing and then make them one. Yeah, and call it Wordflow. Perfect. <laughs> Done. Fix it again. And then also, have the rock also... your app. Don't have your, call have the rock be your spokesperson. Don't call the anniversary update anniversary update. No, call it the rock update. And don't call Windows 10 Windows 10. Call it Windows 1. <laughs> okay, we're we're done. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wind down the show then. Well, thanks guys. This has been the Wind Beta Podcast, episode 61 for the week of April 15th. Thank you very much for joining us. As always, I'm one of your co-hosts, Sean Mike. You can find me on Twitter at Sean underscore Michael underscore UK. And you can find the other co-host of the show, Zach, on Twitter. At Zach B underscore. You can find WinBeta all over social media. We're on Twitter at WinBeta D-O-T or YouTube. Definitely check out YouTube. Zach does great stuff. You want to see that messaging app in action that we talked about, just go over there. You might even be watching us on YouTube right now, just as soon as we're done and the after party's over. Just click on that other one and you can watch the other video. We're not on Snapchat because, you know, there's reasons for that. But we're on other things like Facebook, <laughs> all that sort of thing. So you can follow us there as well. Thanks a lot, guys. We will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.